since we are in school, we always learn that you know having good nutritious diet. But what exactly does nutrition mean? So nutrition is just the process of providing or obtaining food that is necessary for health and growth. That is broadly what nutrition means. But when it comes to balanced diet, that is where we talk about that you know the food which you get is nutritious enough because it should contain all the vital nutrients which are required by your body. So that vital nutrients will include all your vitamins, minerals, micronutrients, macronutrients, cereals, grains, fruits, vegetables, all of these. So understanding on what our diet should comprise of and you know how it will help our body stay fit and we will maintain our uh, you know levels of nutrients which are much required so that you know we do not fall sick so often we, we are not having a compromisation on our immunity is very important so way back in 1700s the us da they developed something called as the food pyramid so if you see on the screen on the left side you will see that there's a food pyramid which we have always been talking about that you know we should eat maximum of cereals and grains and then we should have fruits and veggies, meat, poultry, and dairy items should be there. And a little lesser should be there on the fats and salts and oil. So if you see, that's how your pyramid goes. You know, the top is the lowest one to, to be consumed and the top or the lower, the bottom one, the bottom one which we have, the cereals and grains, that is the one which is to be consumed the maximum. And the topmost of the pyramid, is to be to be the one which is consumed to be the least amount. So that has been prevalent and it's been there. Recently, what happened is as we evolve, our diet patterns evolve, there are so many food products in the market and the lifestyle changes so much. The USDA moved to something which is called as the food plate. So this is which you see on your right side is the plate, which is also known as my plate. So what my plate is, it's more like you cannot actually have a you know, measurement saying K, uh, like for cereals and grains, you should have 100 grams of cereals and 20 or 40 grams of uh, fruits and vegetables. It cannot be that way. So the better way of visualizing your uh, diet composition is on the plate. So when you look at your plate, this is how it should be. A major portion should be composed of the vegetables, all those green leafy vegetables which are required by your body. You know, it will provide you fibers, it will improve your immunity, it will also improve the content, whatever you are taking in the body, and it will avoid all the macro and micronutrient deficiencies. So that is the first part. Then followed by that, there should be almost an equal division of whole grains and healthy food. So when we talk about whole grains, it's it can be anything. It can be the whole wheat bread. It can be whole grain pasta. It can be even limited but refined uh, grains like white rice, polished rice. These can be taken. And then the healthy protein, that is what consume, you know, it comprises of all these fish, poultry, legumes, red meat, and uh, but <clears throat> and some amount of cheese. But, you know, this will not contain at any given point, any of these do not contain processed meat. We will never say that, you know, you should take a lot of processed food, like, you know, in vegetables, you should take French fries. That's not what we say as vegetables. When we talk about vegetables, they are like properly cooked, good food, fresh, fresh vegetables. Similarly, when we talk about whole grains, it's the whole wheat bread, whole grain, whole, whole wheat, whole grain pasta. They are not the ones which are polished. They are not the ones which are refined. Similarly, on the healthy protein, when we say, we do not talk about the canned processed meat. Moving to fruits. Although you see that there's a little component there, but yes, eat fruits of all colors and plenty of fruits. Followed by that, you should definitely have water. So you see on one side you have oil and on the other side you have water. So when we say about water, it's not just water. It can be tea or coffee also, but in a very limited amount. Very, very limited amount. You should not exceed more than one or two cups per day. That too, it cannot be those coffee mugs. 
ideally it should be those uh, 70 ml or uh, 100 ml of tea or coffee once or twice per day but that's about it and you should avoid having sugary drinks that is very necessary followed by that when we talk about healthy oils so right now in the market we have a lot of options you know uh, olive oil canola oil sunflower oil so all these oils i think what we are talking about is avoiding trans fat so we cannot have all these dalda vanaspati ghee what we can have is better ones like the ones which are used for cooking which are easier to digest like mustard oil you can have olive oil so they are good for cooking they can be used as dressings on the salad and limiting your trans fat and limiting the consumption of butter is very important so when this my plate was introduced in the us it was like michelle obama she said that you know when we look at our plate we cannot count the grams we cannot count that you know if the bottom most is grains or cereals what we see is we visualize our plate so when we are eating or when we are even talking about our family or friends or colleagues when we see a plate this is how we should be looking at it so with this this is what i wanted to put in the basics of nutrition and how it evolved moving to the next slide is why again nutrition is so important so if you see on the left side again you know <clears throat> generally this is how the the life evolves you are a newborn then you grow into a child you become an adolescent and if you are female you become a pregnant woman and then you age and then you are belong to the geriatric population so you know throughout all your phases of life nutrition is very important and also with nutrition your body requirements keeps changing like when you are a kid you will need more of energy and fat at times to grow and when you are an adolescent your body requirements of proteins will increase and then when you are getting older you will not require so much of fat because you have a you know more sedentary lifestyle and the absorption mechanism also reduces your metabolism goes down so over the years as you progress as you evolve the requirements of your body changes but as a woman it, nutrition plays very important role right through the adolescence now why is it so because it helps you prepare yourself so that you know when you mature sexually you are you are in a state that your body is ready to have a healthy lifestyle and if you choose to when be pregnant or conceive at that given point of time your body has the stores or you know it it has the uh, buildings or contents that it requires to be utilized during pregnancy so right from the adolescence it's very necessary that you know a right nutrition is taken while i will continue on the point that you know from the time you are born it's necessary but as a woman in the adolescence it's the base where you need to be very very focused on what nutrition you take what types of food items you take because that will later determine how you and you know if you are planning to have a progeny how things will go and you know you are not falling into that trap of malnutrition or undernourishment so in this is another table which is being taken from nian hyderabad where there is a breakdown of you know how or how much should be the composition so if you look at the food plate and try and compare this it will pretty much come on the same side saying that yes there should be highest amount of roots and tubers green leafy vegetables and other vegetables followed by your pulses and cereals and whole wheat grains and millets and then little amount of sugar little amount of fats and oil so this is how your plate will look like which is very similar to what we have discussed in the previous slide of you know that whole plate looking arrangement so at every time there might be a little bit of shuffle but overall this is how the nutrition pattern looks like so when we are talking about nutrition i thought it would be you know 
imperative that we talk a bit about the nutritional deficiency as well. So uh, broadly, there are two forms of nutritional deficiency. The first one is primary and the second one is secondary. So primary nutritional deficiency is nothing but, you know, it occurs due to the unavailability of certain vital nutrients in your body. And that can be resolved by the use of supplements. And when you talk about the secondary, secondary nutritional deficiency, you know, that can be due to some medical conditions like, you know, celiac diseases or pernicious anemia, wherein the body is not able to absorb the nutrients. This is where the identification of this takes time and also the treatment of secondary nutritional deficiency takes time. Now, when we break down this nutritional deficiencies based on the types, it's mostly vitamin deficiency, mineral deficiency, and protein deficiency. So vitamin deficiency is very common and amongst them also the most common ones are vitamin B9, vitamin B12, and vitamin D deficiency. And especially due to COVID, considering that we all have been home and you know, we were not able to have the intake of sun and uh, we were not, our body was not able to absorb sunlight and so a lot of them have developed this vitamin d deficiency so that is one thing which was very commonly seen especially due to the pandemic next one is mineral deficiency which is mostly due to iodine iron magnesium zinc deficiency and these are some of the common deficiencies which you will see in uh, vegetarians again because the non-vegetarians have access to red meat and they are not at such a higher vulnerability to fall prey to such mineral deficiencies, but the vegetarian population is very prone to fall sick or fall under the uh, group of mineral deficiencies. The last one is protein deficiency, which is associated with improper calorie intake. So with this, <clears throat> I think we will move to understanding you know, how to determine nutritional deficiency. So we have talked what nutrition is, we have talked what are the types of nutritional deficiency. So now when, you know, because most of you guys are from the clinic and you will be having patients of various age groups. So what does it mean to see when, you know, understand the signs of nutritional deficiency? So you know, broadly it can be classified or it can be identified under eight different categories where you can, you know, you can just visualize and check that yes if this patient is suffering from some sort of nutritional deficiency so we have eyes again within eyes if you can see dark circles night poor night vision ruptured blood vessels paler pale lower eyelid these can be some of the signs for nutritional deficiency teeth bleeding gums crowded teeth hair you have dry hair hair loss dandruff nails again if you have in spoon shaped nails or white marks, pale nails, they're brittle. They, they, this is again one of the points for saying that yes, this patient might have nutritional deficiency. When we come to muscles and joints, um, muscle cramping, twitching, some amount of swelling, numbness, clicking joints, these are very common in nutritional deficiencies. Mouth, you might have some sores in the or cracks in the corner of the mouth. Your enamel might be, so again, enamel is the outer covering of the teeth. So you might have a weak tooth enamel. You might have loss of taste. So that is another thing. On the skin, you might have some dryness in the skin. You might have unusual nosebleeds. You might have some acne during menstruation. Dermatitis, red stretch marks. These are again signs of nutritional deficiency. Emotional and mental, since you know we have talked about health and we are talking about health, we have to consider this thing of you know fuzziness, irritation, depression. These all might also be the signs of nutritional deficiency. So all in all, they can be accounted by you know multiple reasons or multiple types of deficiencies. But if you see a patient with such signs. I think it, it is imperative that you would be you know, prescribing them with multivitamins. And you know, further taking care of if there are any other systemic conditions that need to be resolved as well. 